Sai Ram. Let's start with three ohms. Oh, Loving Sairam and a hearty welcome to each and every one of you joining us today. Wherever you are in the world, we pray and hope that you and your loved ones are safe and healthy. Needless to say, the COVID-19 pandemic has gripped the world since 2020 and has affected all our lives, bringing in a lot of undue stress as it challenged health, lifestyles, relationships, and several other aspects of life, which many of us still struggle to cope with. On the other hand, these times have also been a catalyst for us to turn inwards and stay centered in the highest truth. The Cutting the Ties That Bind method, founded by the late Mrs. Phyllis Crystal, offers excellent tools to help you stay connected with your higher self and let go of all that no longer serves you. This method is so versatile that we have symbols to help allay fears, let go of self-limiting beliefs, cut ties of karma, and so much more. Ultimately, to be free from all that binds you from being your true, joyful, and loving self. In today's session, I am pleased to share that we have with us Dr. Shrikant Sola, a senior practitioner of the Phyllis Crystal Method, who will be sharing with you a lot about how to make the most of the cutting ties work during the pandemic. Do stay on till the end, as today he will be sharing with you a secret, something you wouldn't have heard before. We hope that you are as excited to learn about it as we are. During the session, if you have any questions, please type them in the live chat box, as there will be a question and answer segment at the end. Without further ado, Here's inviting Dr. Shrikant Sola. Saira. Great, let's go ahead and begin then. So crystal method, or known as the cutting the ties that bind work, was begun by Mrs. Phyllis Crystal way back in the 1950s, and over several decades was advanced to um, a wonderful force that bind us to birth after birth after birth. It's a wonderful technique. I met Phyllis way back in 1996, and uh, it wasn't until 2009, though, that we actually uh, started learning cutting the ties that bind in earnest. At that time, uh, one day during Darshan Puttaparthi, uh, Swami came up to Shivani and said, Phyllis is coming, learn from her. And it turned out a month later, Phyllis did come uh, from Switzerland to India, and we had a chance to learn from her on many occasions during her visits to India subsequently. This work is wonderful, and it's very appropriate for the current pandemic situation. We're going to focus on those symbols that will be of especially helpful during this time. Let's start with the maple as one of the key symbols in the cutting the ties that bind work. We'll go ahead and place this symbol on the screen for those of you who are not familiar with it. The maypole is an old 
symbol that is used a lot in Europe, in some countries in South America, Central America. And it is helpful to um, connect to what Phyllis calls the high C, which is short for the higher consciousness. We know the high C for Sai devotees, at least as Swami, you may call it Jesus, Allah, Buddha, it doesn't matter. It's the same high C for everyone, regardless of the name. So let's go ahead by connecting. Imagine that you're sitting in a golden circle of light. The golden circle is on the ground. And if you were to extend your arms on either side of you with your fingertips extended, that would be the diameter of the golden circle. This is your own personal space. In front of you, at a distance that is comfortable for you, see a, a maypole, which is basically a pole as you see here. And at the top of the maypole is a golden globe or golden sphere, which represents the high C or the higher consciousness of us all, our highest aspects of ourselves. Hanging from the uh, top of the maypole are many different colored ribbons. And in your inner scene, in your meditation, I would like you to get up from your golden circle, go towards the maypole, and pick any ribbon that appeals to you. If you like, you can hold the ribbon in your hand, notice the color and texture, and then sit back down in your own golden circle. This ribbon symbolizes your connection to the high seat, to the divine self. If you'd like, you can even give a gentle tug on the ribbon to know that you're connected to the high seat. Now we're going to ask the high seat to send us different energies that we can use to, in our daily lives to strengthen us and to make us whole and complete. So let's begin. Let's begin by asking the high seat to send us relaxing energy, relaxing energy. You can think, feel, visualize, or imagine this relaxing energy coming from the high C through the ribbon directly into your body. And as you breathe in, take in as much of this relaxing energy as you can. And as you breathe out, just let go. Let go of all tension. Let go of all strain. Let go of all worries. Feel the muscles of your body relaxing. Your face is relaxed. Your eyes are relaxed. Your shoulders are relaxed. Your back is relaxed. And as you breathe more of this relaxing energy in, with each exhalation, just let go. As Phyllis would say, let go, let go, let go. Do this for a few more breaths until you feel completely at ease. Let go of your disappointments. Let go of your worries. Let go of your old thoughts and beliefs that no longer serve you. Just let go. Wonderful. Now, continuing the meditation, let's ask the high C to send us healing energy. Healing energy. You can think, feel, visualize, or imagine this healing energy coming from the high sea through the ribbon directly into you. Now, although the energy is flowing through a small ribbon, I'd like you to feel as if it's flowing through a huge fire hose or a huge pipe. So much energy is flowing from the high sea to you at full force, and you're just receiving this healing energy. Phyllis would often say that all of us have something about our bodies that is not quite right. And this healing energy can indeed heal whatever is not quite right with us. So allow this healing energy to flow into your body, healing you physically, emotionally, mentally, and of course, spiritually. Go ahead and do this for a few more breaths on your own. Very good. Now the third energy we'll ask for is purifying and cleansing energy, the energy to purify and cleanse. Phyllis says that you can imagine this like a shower or perhaps like a waterfall, if you'd like, um, or you can take it in through the ribbon as we've done before, but think, feel, visualize, or imagine whatever suits you that this energy is coming to you and purifying you in every aspect, cleansing away your 
unneeded thoughts, your worries, your tensions, whatever is not you, just let it wash it away. Next, we add, ask for strengthening energy, strengthening energy from the high sea. Again, think, feel, visualize, or imagine the strengthening energy flowing to you like a huge wave of energy, coming right into you. We would often see Phyllis working tirelessly, 16, 18 hours a day, um, with, but she would look as fresh as a flower at the end of the day. And she would say that's because she depends on the energy of the high sea whereas others like us depend on our own ego energy. And so it is when we learn to depend on the strength of the high sea that we can continue to work without fatigue, without tiredness, not only just physical, but also mental and emotional, something that we all need these days. So breathe in deeply, breathing in all the strength and energy and let go even of the thought that I am tired. Just let go of that thought and feel yourself becoming stronger and stronger and stronger. And finally, let us ask for that most precious gift of all, the unconditional love of the high sea. This unconditional love is what we have been looking for, for hundreds of thousands of births. And we can only receive this from the high sea. But this unconditional love is our birthright, Phyllis says. You don't have to earn it. You don't have to deserve it. It's the most wonderful thing of all. So let's go ahead and really bring this into us, the unconditional love of the high sea. Feel it, see it filling you and flowing from you, fulfilling you in every way. Wonderful. That's just wonderful. You can go ahead and open your eyes, stretch your arms and legs like a cat or dog coming out of sleep back to the present moment. Now, what I'm going to do is take you through a few short symbols, and then I'm going to take you through a new symbol that was uh, shared with me recently. I'll describe how that happened. But let's start with the beginning. So let's move from the maypole to one of the uh, very key symbols in the cutting the ties that bind work, which is called the beach ball. So the beach ball is just exactly that. Imagine a beach ball around you. Again, if you were to extend your arms and uh, fingertips as far as they could go, it would be that diameter, but it's a beach ball just as is shown here. And any negative energy, any negative thoughts, any negativity of any kind, whatever is not good for you, just when it comes and hits the surface of this rubber ball, like a rubber ball, it just bounces back, okay? Without harming you. That's the basic part of the beach ball. You can place this beach ball around yourself. You can place it around your home, around your vehicles, uh, around your pets, and around your uh, children who, are, who have not yet reached adolescence. You cannot place it around children who are older than puberty, who have already crossed puberty, nor can you do it for other adults because that would interfere with their free will, but you can certainly do it for others. Now, just imagine this, just take a moment, close your eyes for a minute, and imagine this wonderful beach ball. I want you to realize how safe you are in this beach ball, how protected you are in this. And now I'd like you to take it a step further. On the top of the beach ball, above you, I'd like you to imagine a golden umbrella, okay, which is now that umbrella is flush with the top of the ball, okay? And that golden umbrella adds additional protection. Phyllis shared this uh, addition to the, the beach ball technique with us, and we found it to be very useful. So the first part of the basic beach ball is what most of us know, but the beach ball with the golden umbrella is to be used whenever you feel like you particularly need to be protected or feel safe. 
ultimately everything comes from love. But when we find ourselves in these difficulties, the beach ball can be very useful. It's a wonderful symbol to use. Okay, now we're going to go on to a symbol. I do the beach ball every day. I do the maple every day. But this next symbol I find to be very, very useful. It's called the star for fear. It's another one that I do every day. Sometimes I do it just when some random, you know, thought happens. Uh, it's This is a wonderful symbol that we can use to get rid of fear, anxiety, uh, worries, but it's, a, it's the star for fear and uh, something that, again, all of us need so much. The way to do this symbol is really simple and it hardly takes all these symbols, you see, it hardly takes a minute or so. But the way to do the star for fear is you imagine that there's a star, like the kind that's shown here. It could be like the sun also with rays of light coming out. It's a golden colored uh, star. And in the center is this dark area or black area. And you can imagine this star like as if you were on a pulley or like a rope above you, just in front of you, but above you. And whenever you need it, you just bring it down. Uh, to that part of your body where when, when you feel afraid, you know, where do you feel fear? Maybe you feel it in the pit of your stomach, maybe in the lower part of your abdomen, maybe you feel it around your chest or heart area, maybe your jaw tightens up. Wherever you feel that fear, just bring that star down in your inner scene, of course, to that area. Okay, that's the first part. Now, the second part is to actually let go of the fear. This really works. Okay, this is how you do it. Breathe in. From the outer part of the star, golden light, this divine light coming from the outer part of the star. And then as you exhale, breathe out your fear into the center of the star, that dark area. And you're just going to let that fear flow into the dark part of the star to be absorbed. Then you breathe in again, more golden light. So you have to empty, you have to create space by letting go of the fear and then filling it with that divine golden light. Let's do this together, okay? So in your inner scene, go ahead and pull that star down to that part of your body uh, where you tend to feel fear the most. Take in a deep breath. And then as you exhale, just breathe out your fear into the center of the star. Let it get absorbed completely by that dark area, the black area in the center. And then as you inhale, breathe in that divine golden light so that it fills you completely. As you exhale again, let go of whatever fear you may be having. It could be your own fear. It could be something that, you know, fear can be contagious. It could be something that is around you. It doesn't matter. Just let go. Breathe in again, that divine golden light. Let's continue this for a few moments. Wonderful. That's just wonderful. Now, Phyllis says, you can turn off the, the, um, the slides, please. Uh, Phyllis says that the star for fear should only be done about uh, two minutes a day, not two minutes at a time. You can do it several times during the day, but it should be just done two minutes at a time. And the reason is because otherwise you would get too much energy and that would not be helpful for you. So uh, the Star for Fear is a wonderful, wonderful tool. I think all of you need to do it on a regular basis. Um, again, I do it. This is one of my daily techniques that I do. I do it in the morning. I do it in the evening. Sometimes I do it after, you know, reading the newspaper <laughs> or watching the news. Um, but it's really awesome. Uh, if I have a fear-based thought, I do this uh, star immediately. I, it may take just 30 seconds, but boy, I feel so much better after doing it. So please do the star for fear on a regular basis. Okay, now I'm gonna share with you a symbol and I'm trying to get to through these symbols because this is the last of the old symbols. And then I'm gonna go on to the new symbol that I'd like to share with you. This is the last one. And it's called balancing the pair of opposites. It's also known as the birds. Um, and you know what happens in life? 
the reason we incarnate is because we either desire something or we don't want something. And it's this that pushes us to take birth after birth after birth. This symbol helps us to regain that balance. And if you do it properly, well, all desires will go. And when you have no desires, then you get moksha, liberation from the cycle of birth and death. That's how it works. This symbol is that powerful. The way this works is you imagine that you're walking on a tight rope. <clears throat> You know, just like the kinds that they have in, in a circus and those kind of things. But you don't have a bar. Instead, you're just using your hands and you're walking comfortably. Don't worry that you're going to fall off. Nothing will happen to you. And you see on your right side a very beautiful white bird. Okay. And this bird is so beautiful that you would like to reach out to it and touch it or maybe even allow it to land on your hand. This white bird symbolizes everything that you would love to have in your life, okay? But the problem is that if you reach out to touch this bird, you'll lose your balance and fall off. And in the literal sense, or at least in a symbolic sense, that's what happens to so many of us all the time. Now, at the same time, on the left side is a black bird. And this black bird represents all the things that you would never want to have in your life. It could be experiences, people, whatever it is. And what happens here is that blackbird is trying to land on you. It's trying to land on your hand. And if you were to withdraw your hand or move it away, then you would lose your balance. And again, you would fall. In the symbol of balancing the pairs of opposites, good and bad, black and white, we're learning to accept them because actually they have no reality beyond what we assign to them in our mind. We just learn to accept them. If they wish to land, if they wish to do whatever it is, we're not affected. And you just keep walking on the tightrope to the other side. Okay. So let's go ahead and do this. Close your eyes. And in your inner scene, and like you can even climb up the ladder, you know, like how you have in the circus and so forth. You can climb up the ladder and stand on that platform where the tight rope begins. Go ahead and step onto the rope and extend your hands onto either side, palms facing upwards. And walk onto the tight rope. And in your inner scene, visualize a white bird, very beautiful on your right hand side. And on your left side, a black bird, symbolizing the things you would not like to experience and walk across that rope comfortably without any fear, without any concern. There's another platform on the other side where the rope is, is tied. And you see on that side, in whatever form you like, your high C if you have a form waiting for you. Just go ahead and walk across without any fear. One foot in front of the other. When you reach the platform on the other side, Congratulate yourself, turn around, and do it again. Go back to the other side from where you started. The white bird is still on your right-hand side. The black bird is still on your left. And when you reach the other side, you're done. If you fall off or feel like you're going to fall off, don't worry. The high sea is there to catch you every time. So you don't have to imagine that you're falling off the rope. The high sea is there to protect you. Okay, awesome. So this symbol will balance you very quickly and uh, you can turn off the slides, please. This symbol will balance you very quickly and help you to come back to that state of, of being centered again. Okay, so we've done maypole, we've done beach ball with the golden umbrella on top, we've done the star for fear and we've done the balancing the pairs of opposites. So we've gone over four symbols that are very, very useful. Now we're gonna go into a new symbol. We're going to go into a new symbol. This new symbol, um, how it was shown to me is quite interesting. I had a dream about a week ago. And in this dream, uh, Phyllis Crystal was there. And she and I were sitting together, just like in the old days. And she gave me a copy of her book, Cutting the Ties That Bind. This is all in a dream. Okay. And she opens the book to a particular chapter. And she says to me, I'd like you to read this chapter, dear you'll find that it's very useful to you. So I looked at the chapter that she pointed to, um, 
I don't re recall, I had never seen that chapter before. It was just a page and a half. And I turned to Phyllis and I said, Phyllis, I've read this book at least 15 times. I've never seen this chapter before. And she just smiled and she said, read this chapter, dear, and practice it. You'll find that this symbol helps to protect you from the energy of the world, the energy of the world, okay? And this is the symbol that I'm going to share with you. So this symbol comes in three flavors, and I'm going to take you through each one. Let me describe it first, and then we'll put up the, the slides, and then I'm going to take you through each symbol. You see, um, in this current pandemic, what's happened is that uh, the the news, the, our friends, and so many people falling sick, uh, looking for beds, looking for oxygen. Um, if you're in other parts of the country um, or other parts of the world, uh, we've all been affected. And that fear energy becomes very strong. And we get affected by it, no matter what. If we're just surrounded and it's like a sea and, and we're swimming through that energy. This symbol is so awesome because it really keeps that energy away. And you feel so light, so happy again after doing this. Um, now, I'm not saying that Phyllis Crystal came in a dream and gave me this symbol. Please don't mistake me. Phyllis told, has told us that our dreams represent the subconscious aspect of ourselves. But I found that this particular symbol is very useful, and I've shared it with others before sharing it with, with you. And all of them have said the same thing. It's just amazing, and it really pushes away the energy of this current time. You start to feel free and, and light again like we used to, okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to imagine a big column of light. In my dream, it was like two or three stories high, maybe three or four feet in width, and it's golden light. Everything about this symbol is golden light, okay? So it's a big column of light. In my dream, it was about 20 or 30 feet away from me. And on top of this light, you have your choice of one of three symbols. You can either place an Om in the Devanagari script. So if you can go to the uh, slides, please, to share what uh, that might look like. I have a drawing. We have, we've made a drawing that um, uh, Vishwa has done, thank you, uh, which you'll find useful to uh, And then Om floating above the column. There's a little gap, okay? So the Om is not resting on top of the quint. Uh, that Om is what is others, please. So this is the first way. So let's go ahead and uh, uh, do this now. So imagine that there's a beautiful uh, column uh, of Madam golden Singer, light. Can you re just repeat mm -hmm. uh, what you just said? Looks like there was a lag in yes. the network. Okay. So uh, the first, there's three ways to do this symbol. The symbol of protecting I'm going to imagine a golden column of light. In my dream, it was about two or three stories tall, and it was about four or five feet in width, and resting on top of the golden symbol, not resting, but floating just above the golden symbol, you can place one of three different symbols, okay? So always you'll have a golden column of light. On top of that, you're gonna place one more symbol. The first way to do it is with a om. A-U-M, home, that is like the, in the Devanagari script. So can you show that slide, please? And then we'll, um, that will help to understand what it looks like. So you'll, here it comes here. Yes. So you can see that there's a person standing and then there's this lovely column of light and the ohm is very large, okay? It's a very large ohm. This is the typical Devanagari script that is used to uh, draw ohm um, and uh, it's quite large. So this is the first way to do the symbol. Let's go ahead and do this together, okay? So imagine that the column of light, sort of like in this picture, is a little bit distant from you, not too far, but you know, that it's not right on top of you and it's uh, much taller than you. As you can see in this picture, maybe two, two and a half stories. Floating above the column of light is a golden ohm. And coming from both the column of light and the symbol is so much divine golden light. Divine golden light, it's just radiating everywhere.
Yeah. See how beautiful that is. Yeah. It works right away. No, it's really lovely. If you do it, do it for about a minute or two and you'll see that uh, you'll feel much better. Now let's go to the next version of this symbol. So in the dream that I had uh, in the second version, this symbol came up and I said, Phyllis, I don't know how to read Chinese. And she said, that's not Chinese, dear. That's uh, Tibetan. That's uh, one of the Tibetan dialects. So this is Om, like in um, the Tibetan mantra, the Tibetan Buddhist mantra, um, Om Mane Padmi Ham, for example. And so this is also Om, but it's a different way of displaying it. So let's go ahead and imagine this symbol also. And just see how it feels. If you need to, you can look at the screen and then just sort of imprint it in your mind and then go ahead and you don't have to, if you're not able to visualize it, you can imagine it, you can think it, or you can just feel it. Any of those four techniques are fine. Visualize it, imagine it, think or feel this symbol before you. Wonderful, wonderful. Isn't it uh, amazing how the quality of the symbol changes or the quality of the experience changes from one to the next? Let's go to the third option that you have, which is uh, to place the Christian cross on top of the golden pillar of light. So you can see that here. And again, go ahead and imagine you, you can stand, you can sit in your inner scene. It really doesn't matter. But the golden pillar of light is before you. It's shining in all golden light in all directions and floating just a short distance above the golden column of light is the cross. So can you feel how the quality of the same exercise with the cross is different from the um, Devanagari Om or the Tibetan Om, uh, but how beautiful each one is and how, uh, at least for me, I feel so clear now, you know, that, that uh, heavy weight of <laughs> the pandemic stress and noise and all the stuff that's there feels like it's been lifted away. It's just a lovely, lovely symbol. So please practice this and uh, do this uh, every day. I do it about uh, one or two minutes uh, maybe three times a day. And uh, soon uh, now I'll be starting for longer durations just to see what it feels like and to understand it better. Um, but I suggest that you practice this as well. Okay, let's go to the Q&A uh, session now. And let's hear from the audience what kind of questions they have. I'll do my best to answer them. And then we will close with the ending maple. So the first question we have, should we imagine the light coming out of the column engulfing us? It doesn't matter. The question is, should we imagine the light <clears throat> coming out of the column engulfing us? It really doesn't matter. Um, don't get too technical with this. What you're trying to do is um, see the symbols are basically communicating with the subconscious mind and they're uh, in this way, allowing us to go beyond the, the mind level to something much higher. So it really doesn't matter. Don't get too technical with the, your visualizations. And remember, if you can't see it, you can think it, feel it, or uh, imagine it. That's also fine. Thank you. Another question related to this symbol. 
So do we breathe in the light or absorb the light? Again, it doesn't matter. Again, don't, that's all, don't get too mental, please. Don't, don't work for the mind. Just become silent in the presence of the symbol. That's enough. The symbol will take care of everything else. Don't think, oh, I have to breathe like this. I have to do like this. Nothing. Just be in the presence of the symbol. And that's enough. Just be. And the symbol will take care of everything else. Okay. You don't have to do anything. Another question is, how far should this column be from us? Same question, same answer. Don't get too mental, guys. See, what you need to do is you need to feel it. You need to, to allow yourself to immerse. Um, what's happening is you're thinking, am I doing it right or not? Don't do that. Don't make that mistake. Focus on the energy that comes from the symbol, okay? Focus on that feeling of lightness, of, of peace, of quietness. Let's do it again now with these same kind of questions. And uh, let's just, so just imagine you are in front of this column of light floating on top. Use whichever of the three symbols you like. This is the symbol for protecting yourself from the energy of the world. So whether you want to use the Devnagari Om, the Tibetan Om, or the cross, whichever one you like, just go ahead and imagine, just feel what happens to you. Be silent and just watch. See, much better. Yeah, don't let the monkey mind get in the way. Should I do this? Should I do that? Should it be like this? Should, don't worry about that. That's not important. Focus on, on the, the energy. See, this. all these symbols are just forms of divinity. Light, light is how the human mind understands divinity. It's a symbol for divinity. So this golden light is a symbol for divinity. And that's just what we are um, using in this symbol. Thank you. Um, another question is, can these symbols be done while we are carrying on with our daily chores? Can you, these symbols be done when we're carrying on with our daily chores? You know, the, the symbol for, for the energy of the world, balancing the pairs of opposites, um, the star for fear, that requires some concentration some focus, some attention. Beach ball just takes like a second. I mean, it just takes a few moments to, to put the beach ball, paching, and then golden uh, umbrella above you, paching, and then it's done. No, there's really not much to the beach ball. The maypole is like a meditation and uh, you need to be silent for that. Please don't do these while driving. <laughs> okay, thank you. Another question. Um, someone says that they find so many people to be edgy and confrontational over the past few weeks. How to avoid getting into these energies? Yes. So this is the last symbol that was shared with you, the symbol for protecting yourself against the energy of the world. Um, people are going to be uh, edgy. They're going to be, you know, dishum dishum fighting and, and angry and so forth, upset about small things. It's just the way that things are uh, right now. And it goes in waves from one country to the next. It'll be in India now. It'll go to another country after that. It'll go to another country after that. There'll be another third wave or fourth wave, perhaps. We don't know. Um, but uh, these symbols will protect you. So don't worry about what others are doing. Their drama, their trauma is for them to go through. Help them lovingly through it the best that you can if you're able to, but stay focused in love because that is what is most important. The root cause of the pandemic is collective human anger. Human anger. That is what spiritually is behind the coronavirus pandemic. The root cause for that lack of or for that, sorry, the, the root cause for that human anger is a lack of love. And it's this love that is so much required today. So stay focused in love. Thank you. The next question, um, can we use this new symbol for others? No, I knew that question was going to come and I knew someone very intelligent was going to ask that question, but you can't do it for others. It's like saying, can you brush somebody else's teeth. Well, I guess you could.
could bash somebody else's feet, but they probably symbols. These symbols are for your own use, for your own. You can't chant for them. You can't, uh, you can pray for them, but you can't make them pray. I mean, not in a way that, that um, would be meaningful anyway. So in the same way, these symbols are for your own uh, personal use. Now I have done it for our home. I've done it for our business. Um, and it's been useful there, but can I do it for the whole world or the whole community? Um, I don't think you should be doing that right now. So just use it for yourself and you can use it for your home if you'd like. Same thing, you can place a beach ball around yourself. You can place a beach ball around your home also, but not on others, unless they're pets or small kids who have not reached uh, puberty yet. Thank you. The next question. Should we see the exercise from the first person perspective or third person perspective? Same thing. It doesn't matter, yeah. You know, the whole point of this is to feel divine light, to feel divine love. Don't get caught up in, is there light coming? Should I see it this way or that way? Or is it engulfing me? And how tall is it? And that's all stuff for the monkey mind. Don't get stuck in that. Please don't do that. Just focus on the exercise. Just focus on, see, the point of this is to be, in love, to be divine light, which is what you are. And that's what this exercise is reminding you about. That divine light is always there. And that divine light is just another manifestation, another form of God. That's all. Thank you. The next question, the star symbol. Once it absorbs the negative energy, does it fade or is it pulled away? Does it, cre does it create it or does it hold it or does it recycle it? That's not your concern. Yeah, that's not your concern. What it does with that fear energy is not your concern. You just do the star for fear. Once you're done, you can imagine it goes back up on its pulley or its ropes back to where it is. And it's always there above you whenever you need it. You just pull it back down whenever you feel any fear. But it's not your concern what happens to that fear energy. Thank you. The next question, I tried but couldn't feel anything? Does it take several tries? It can for some people, um, especially if you've not uh, been doing these type of exercises before, it can do it. Don't be discouraged. It's like, um, you know, you know how some people can whistle like this really loud. I can't do that. And I've tried so many times and <laughs> so it's okay. Um, but I'm sure that if somebody taught me how to do it, if I really tried, I would learn how to do it. So um, don't get discouraged if you don't do it the first time. It's really all right. Um, nobody learns to swim the first time in the pool. Nobody learns to ride their bicycle the first time they get on a bike. So if you didn't feel anything, then um, just do it again. You no, know? and don't try so hard. If you're, if you're, probably the reason you didn't feel anything, honestly, is that you're just trying too hard, like like this. Don't do that. Just relax. That's why in the maypole. The first energy we ask for is relaxing energy. Just relax. Let go, let go, let go. If you really relax first and then do these exercises, they're much, much, much more powerful. Okay, let's take one last question and then we will end with the closing maple. Go ahead, Vishwad. The last question is, is it all right if the symbol rotates slowly? <laughs> like one of those rotating restaurants to me like this? Yeah, that's fine. It doesn't matter. That's fine. Could we just add <laughs> one more last question? Sure, sure, sure. Okay. Um, someone says, asks if they need to do all three versions. And what is your advice for someone like me, who is a regular practitioner of the cutting the ties with buying method, but is not doing so anymore? I can't explain why I stopped and I would like to start again. Mm -hmm. So if you stopped and, and would like to start again, it's really okay. Don't beat yourself up about it. Um, so just start with the basic symbols. The three basic symbols in the cutting the ties that bind work are the maypole, the um, cosmic tree, and the 
those are the three main symbols, the pairs of opposites. These are really useful for keeping yourself balanced. I am not saying that the symbol that I shared with you today for protecting it against the energy of the world is part of the Phyllis Crystal method work. Please, please, please don't send me emails or messages about this, please. Um, but it is helpful, and I have found this to be helpful, and others have as well. Um, and you may want to add this as well. Oh, so sorry, your yeah. response wasn't very clear because the network uh, blocked. Sure. So what, uh, let me repeat that again, is that if you started or stopped, if you stopped the cutting the ties at nine work, just start again. It's really not a big deal, right? You can um, just start, but start with the basic symbols, maypole, um, which we did today, then uh, the cosmic tree, and then the figure eight. These are the three core symbols of the cutting the ties that bind work. What we did today, in addition to the maypole, with the beach ball, the star for fear, the balancing the pairs of opposites, these are very useful to uh, help you retain balance, you know, no matter what is happening around you. The new symbol that I did, the one for protecting against the energy of the world, please uh, I'm not saying that this is part of the Phyllis Crystal method. It's not officially part of the cutting the ties that bind work. It is something that came to me and I'm sharing with you because I feel that it is helpful for many people, especially during this time. And I think that uh, you will find it too. Okay, great. So can we end with the closing maypole? Yes? All right, so put your hands together, okay, in the namaste position, fingers pointing outwards, and we're going to send that same love that we just received earlier from the high C to everybody around us. So let's begin. You're holding onto the ribbon in your hand, you're receiving the divine light of the high C, receiving the divine unconditional love, excuse me, the unconditional love of the high C, and just allow that unconditional love to fill you completely and to overflow, and then we're going to ask the high C to send this love through our hands to those who need it. Let's begin with those who are close to us, our close, uh, closest uh, family members and relatives. Just bring each person one by one very quickly and move on to the next, allowing the love of the high C to flow to each of them. All this happens in your inner scene. Take in a few breaths, allow the love of the high C to fill you up. And now let's send this to groups of people who could use this unconditional love. Send it to all the hospitals and the doctors in the world, the healthcare workers, the nurses, the technicians and others who are working so hard and so tirelessly to take care of our loved ones and friends who are down with this terrible infection, send it to them. Send it to all the police officers and the scientists and engineers who made vaccines possible. Send it to those who keep us safe, like uh, policemen, ambulance drivers, and others who are involved in this pandemic. Send it to other groups. It could be orphanages, people in nursing homes or homes for the elderly. It could be people in refugee camps uh, or people who have been displaced by natural disasters. So again, just see each person in your inner scene or each group of people in your inner scene. So send that energy to other parts of the world where people need that energy. It could be places like India and Brazil, which are affected by the pandemic. It could be perhaps 
uh, places which are affected by warfare, places which are affected by um, uh, terrorism or other events. But send that energy from the high sea through your hands to each of these areas, but also send that energy to the leaders of these places because they're the ones who have the power or the wherewithal to actually make changes in the lives of those they govern. And finally, we have to send this love to ourselves. So put your arms around yourself and give yourself a great big hug. Really squeeze tightly. And let's say together, I love me. And now let's say it even louder. I love me. Very good. But now we need to say it very loud. Let's shout it out so that everyone can hear I love me. Wonderful. You can gently stretch, move your arms and legs like a cat or dog coming out of sleep. Rub your hands over your body. And whenever you feel comfortable, you can open your eyes. Wonderful. I hope this was helpful. And I pray that all of you are safe, not just you, but all your family, your friends, your loved ones. And please do practice because it is practice that we all require right now. Wish her over to you. Thank you so much, Dr. Sola, for the amazing session today. In today's session, Dr. Sola covered the Meepo, to draw energy from the higher self within you, the beach ball for protection, the star of fear to remove fear, the tightrope for balancing and equanimity, and the new symbol to help you push away the energy of the current times. We urge you all to practice, practice, practice. These times are indeed challenging, but with these amazing tools, we are sure to come through even stronger and happier. Online foundation course on the Cutting the Ties That Bind method will be starting soon. Stay tuned to our social media pages on Instagram, Facebook, and WhatsApp for more information. We thank you all for joining us today. Let's end with the Shanti Mantra. Oh. Samasta Loka Sukhino Bhavantu Samasta Loka Sukhino Bhavantu Samasta Loka Sukhino Bhavantu Om Shanti 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 Stay safe and be healthy. Sairam. <laughs>